Hello, participants of AAA FM UCLA conference, and special thanks for the conference organizers for inviting me to give this talk. My name is Heli Kangas, and I work as a technology manager at VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. And today's presentation is about cellulose-based composite materials for additive manufacturing in electrical insulation, automotive, and marine industries. The co-authors in this work are Kirsi Immonen, Jarmo Ropponen, and Sini Metsäkartelainen, also from VTT. And before going into the actual topic of today, I will first uh, briefly describe our affiliation, VTT. So VTT is a non-profit research organization uh, located in Finland. Uh, we do applied research, uh, so uh, position ourselves somewhere between academia and the industry. And VTT is uh, owned by the Finnish government and managed by the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment. Uh, currently, we have around 2,000 uh, employees working at different uh, research fields in Finland. Uh, we all see images uh, like this and acknowledge that there is a real problem with the plastic uh, waste. And VTT's approach to tackle this plastic challenge is to reduce and replace uh, the amount of fossil based materials by innovating novel materials. Uh, from plant-based resources. We will also take into account recycling of these materials and reuse of them according to the circular economy principle and pay special attention to biodiversity. And one of the uh, focuses is use of cellulose. And why would we use cellulose-based materials for additive manufacturing? Well, cellulose is abundant. It uh, it's, uh, can be found in all, uh, on all plants in nature. And it's also it's, um, uh, sustainable and versatile material with unique um, inherent properties. Uh, cellulose has uh, been used as a raw material for additive manufacturing and, and has been found suitable for it. Uh, and of course, when using cellulose as a renewable raw material, it's possible to reduce environmental impact. And also it enables the use of local raw materials. Additive manufacturing itself enables uh, the moldless production. So uh, when producing or manufacturing components, mold is not needed. Also promotes regional and distributed manufacturing and it, there is a possibility to reduce the material waste. So all, all material that is, that is uh, used in the manufacturing, it will go into the actual product. And of course, there is a challenge that uh, cellulose is not, not naturally thermoplastic, so it cannot be used for additive manufacturing as such. And this challenge has been tackled in the project that I'm now so the project uh, where the results uh, of this presentation are coming from is called, uh, the acronym is NOVUM, and the full title is Pilot Line Based on Novel Manufacturing Technologies for Cellulose-Based Electrical Insulation Components. It's uh, funded by the European Commission's uh, Horizon 2020 a Framework Program. And the total duration of this project is 54 months, so four and a half years. And currently we are on the last leg of the project. So, and, and this project will end in uh, March 22, next, uh, next year. And currently we have nine partners from the uh, five European countries in the project. So we have partners from Finland, Poland, Germany, France and Italy. And the Novum uh, is uh, focusing really on uh, additive manufacturing of cellulose-based thermoplastic materials. And uh, there are different end uses. So uh, we are looking into uh, electrical insulation components, 
represented by partner Hitachi ABB power grids. For automotive components, represented by Research uh, Center of Fiat, Chrysler, CRF. And for decorative elements in cruise ships, uh, represented by Meyer Turku, which is a shipbuilding industry uh, located in Finland. We are also looking at um, uh, printing of fiber foams uh, into 3D shapes and for insulation purposes, but this, this um, um, research line is not under discussion in this presentation. And the outcome of this, uh, this Novum project, as the title also said, is um, uh, a pilot line for this component manufacturing. So it will be based on the developed additive manufacturing technology and, and for the different end use purposes shown above and using the cellulose uh, based material uh, developed in the project. So first, uh, uh, a few words about the cellulose based material development. That the materials developed in Novum thus far, we have uh, uh, developed uh, roughly 30 different compositions. And these composite materials are based on cellulose, acetate, propionate, and microcellulose, with a small amount of bio based plasticizer if needed. And the material strength properties uh, are at the same level or even better than the commercial references, which are usually PLA based. And in this, our material compositions, PLA is not used. Uh, they have a higher cellulose content compared to commercial references, so we can reach the total cellulose content of around 50 to 60. And, and they, they uh, are potentially 100% uh, from renewable resources, so no fossil based materials used here. They have demonstrated excellent. Uh, 3D uh, printability, producing light and smooth uh, surfaces in the products. And the printing process is, is safe. Uh, there is no uh, gas uh, or uh, bad odors generated if the uh, moisture content of the material is uh, below certain limit. Uh, these materials are recyclable ready, uh, meaning that they can be, uh, after printing, they, and the components can be crushed and granulated and uh, printed as such again. And we have studied that the material properties are not deteriorating uh, uh, up to eight cycles. And these developed materials are also suitable for injection molding, which means that they, this kind of uh, it extends the possibilities for their use. Uh, we have faced some challenges in layer adhesion and, and uh, required mechanical uh, properties for certain end use applications, but these are now uh, being considered in the project. Uh, Uh, here are some example, uh, exemplary images of the materials that we have developed. So they differ; they can differ in um, in color um, uh, depending on the of the composition. They can be pro, uh, they can be uh, in the form of granules or filaments and printed as such. And here are some examples of the uh, of the kind of um, uh, components that have been have been uh, printed with those. Uh, so there is this um, as an example, this lampshade, and also a very small uh, mock-up of, of electrical insulation component. And this material composition is currently under patenting. Here are some, uh, some mechanical properties measured uh, both from the component that has been manufactured by injection molding, and, and by 3D printing or additive manufacturing. So, and the, uh, if we compare the, the, uh, uh, the Novum materials, uh, there are five examples of those. They are uh, uh, comparable or better than, than the kind of the mechanical properties of uh, commercial references, uh, meaning, for example, this form Futura. Uh, some some uh, mechanical properties are better, and some uh, are a bit lower. For example, this modulus is something that we still face challenges compared to commercial references. 
Uh, more details can be found uh, from a recent uh, publication and where the reference is shown in the uh, uh, slide bottom. Uh, then a few words about the technology development for additive manufacturing. And this this uh, work has been done by our uh, project partner Printer, and they have this registered trademark uh, for the their uh, equipment. Uh, so the additive manufacturing of thermoplastic cellulose based after a true out uh, review of the different uh, additive manufacturing method, a fused deposition modeling was selected as the printing method. And this printer concept developed is suitable for the granulate mat material. And, and this, this gives us a kind of a, a edge uh, compared to competitors, which are usually, uh, usually using filament printing. And the uh, developed printing technology and the uh, uh, developed novel materials will be used at the pilot line, which is under construction now. And, and then also this potential upscaling to meet the end user requirements uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, size, shape and, and different dimensions is also considered here. And this uh, 3D technology development, it uh, has been taken place in phases. Uh, so uh, in phase one, uh, there was the concept design test and verification. Uh, so uh, uh, first a modular, scalable and multi-material capable desktop unit was developed uh, using multi-material printing tools. And of course, then uh, uh, the, in the phase one, uh, it was uh, kind of this production line capable system was uh, developed with the using granulate printing tool. And then, of course, after that, uh, different post processes, quality control, etc., uh, as well as the scaling, uh, the printing size and speed were considered. And the end, in the end, we are uh, having or pilot land capable large scale industrial system to be uh, put up at the pilot line. And the key technical, uh, the main key technical drivers uh, for the work uh, within this project has been the granulates and, and, and uh, foam, uh, thermoplastic granulates and foam as the printing material. And for the thermoplastic materials, uh, we wanted to consider the possibility to use the recycled material, crushing and granulating without the need of compounding. And this was uh, then established. And also we wanted to consider multi-material printing and hybrid manufacturing possibility with up to four heads. Uh, for example, different printing head size and using solid and foam type of materials, even uh, producing this uh, sandwich type of materials where you could have a solid, uh, uh, solid outer surface and then uh, foam type uh, materials in the core. And also to kind of um, uh, tackle the challenges with the different sizes and, and shapes and so forth we needed and, and the layer adhesion, we needed this heated pallet and conveying system. Uh, to, to enable production at larger pilot line uh, scale. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, my contact details uh, are here in case you have any, any questions for me after, after this presentation. And also would like to mention and that this work has, be, has received funding from the European Commission Horizon 2020 program uh, with the with the uh, proposal novum. Thank you very much for your attention.